Okay, so why don't we make the discussion public now? Uh, the question is, how can you use this, and how can we help you use it? So has anybody thought of a use for this in your teaching, or, or not really? So <laughs> I am so lucky. Yeah. yeah? What would you do? Yeah, please. Not so much the free innovation, but the user innovation I found it really inspiring, and I want to use that for my students because they have a tendency of just think they, they have an idea, don't really know where to go with it. But once you have the user innovation, it comes from another point, and you get the motivation, they get more ins inspired, I think. That yeah. can take them easier to, through the ideation process. Yeah, so that's my hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you're right. I think but that's the right phase. Yeah, yeah. Okay. On a slightly different point, on the, on the free side of things, I mean, I've been seeing a lot more companies, I'd say, in the last two, three years. So many of them now doing everything we do is open source. The company is we're making money in some other way, mm -hmm. and this is much more a model that's prevalent nowadays. And I think that's part of the thing about entrepreneurship, which is like building a model that is not. On something that isn't your core, yeah. give it away, and then you get much more community around that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, first to your point, yes, if you have if you have the need yourself, then you can experiment with yourself and your friends to see if in fact you know it, it, it is something that you really want. And it's it's there's a sort of a low cost niche of doing it because you're experimenting and you're not. Uh, uh, having to experiment on somebody else who experiment on In fact, there has been uh, a survey done by the Kaufman Foundation in the US, and half the new ventures founded on innovations, you know, as opposed to just another restaurant, half of them are based on user innovations. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it's huge, it's huge. Yeah. So I want to make a, an observation that uh, as I see uh, user innovation kind of uh, pro uh, proliferate uh, in uh, low-income third-world countries. People doing without a lot of modern conveniences, finding ways to take uh, cast-off goods and cobbling something together to yeah. make life better. Yeah. I see that happening so much in, in these uh, places around the world, but yet not so much in poor communities in this country. And I wonder, you know, how to you know, encourage some of that in some of our, you know, poor communities where uh, maybe they could, you know, you know, do a little bit more with uh, user innovation. It's a fabulous idea. I mean, a fabulous idea. I mean, it's certain that there's innovation there, like the whole drug trade has been built on user innovations, right? I mean, drug user innovations. Drug user innovations. I mean, so, so, I mean, you know, the skills are there. Mm -hmm. There's no question. And, it, and, you know, in, in a more positive vein, all these things about the, you know, the gardens, the community gardens and all those. Right. So, yeah, I mean, fabulous. Now, in India, where uh, there's a guy named uh, Anil Gupta, mm -hmm. who started something where he, it's fascinating. In India, um, the, the population does generally not value innovation. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to do things the correct way or the old way or whatever, the traditional way. And he goes around and he, in a village, he asks, who has come up with something new? And they're sort of saying, you yeah, know, that deviant bastard did. <laughs> and then he comes out with a scroll from the government saying, ta-da, you were a wonderful innovator. Congratulations. Um, encouraging this process. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yes, there's a lot of it. Do you have any ideas in mind about what you might do about it? Uh, trying to get uh, credit cards out of the hands of some of these people that uh, use that instead to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. That's not an idea, but I think that's one way that maybe uh, people in this country in low-income areas might not get engaged in user innovation because uh, the access to credit makes them able to go and buy solutions. I don't know. I, it, it's a very interesting question. I mean, this whole thing is new, and every question you ask is a new one. Mm -hmm. Really, but being exposed to examples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're working on something here in our little startup idea that maybe uh, could uh, expose some of these people to uh, practices in user innovation. I like that. I think that's wonderful. 
Yeah, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the, what we were looking at with your work this morning, and that you know, a lot of the things, examples we saw in your work are kind of physical acts, right? Mm -hmm. So to do that, you need to have access to some kind of workshop or ability to get your hands on things with tools that you can do right. something. Right. So if you're in a low cost community that doesn't have those resources, having you know the maker spaces or the fab labs and having right. some mentors there to help engage in that user innovation, I think is is really an important part of the piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. How about you? What did you want to say? Oh, yeah. Um, so I teach entrepreneurship to 15 year olds in Japan. Wow. And <laughs> the pain point I have as the instructor or the program manager on this is that after they go back from like a transformative experience, it's very hard to for them to keep on engaging in the same topic because the rest of the life is so overwhelmingly different culturally. And then what I really got attracted by this particular idea like, is that the, some tools like Lego or something can have the entertainment value and has the community network value that can just keep people engaged in the community that uh, can just like run itself like the Scratch community that's a wonderful idea, where the self-reward is really there, and you encourage them to innovate in some way, to give them in, into the habit and the feeling and so Yeah, I, I think that's a wonderful idea. There's no idea there. It's like, I don't know what to do. No, 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 but, but there are, you know, it's such a good idea, because there are, you know, Scratch is a community, you've heard about that, but, I mean, in music, there are communities of people who sort of create software hacks. You know, so in almost any area that you want to hit, there will be hacks that are appealing to. So maybe maybe what you could do is, is, is find out what their passions are and then connect them up to communities in those areas as a way. You know, I mean, I think that would be so cool because I, you know, my friends in Japan, and I know it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah fabulous, good idea. Yeah. So uh, I was thinking about the uh, point of view of a corporation, how uh, corporation can uh, incentive their clients or users to innovate on top of their products. I have saw some friends in Brazil innovate on top of some desolate designs that are open and really complex things, things from electrical engineers to the power walls, uh -huh. something really complex and people innovate on top of that. Yeah. And at the same time, some uh, small companies is really fighting to have anyone trying to innovate on top of their products uh, help. How can a new company, a new venture, uh, incentivate their clients to innovate on top of uh, their products? This is a question that I'm thinking about and it's with Copeland. It's a very good question. I mean, what, what you want to do is basically lower the cost of innovation and increase the benefits. So. Uh, you know, what, what basically uh, um, these guys did, uh, the Skyrim folks, um, is they said, here's a set of tools that makes it easier for you. And they had a whole graduated level of challenges. So it was from, oh look, you can change the green design, the green dinosaur into a purple one. You know, Yay, you know, I did it. And then the challenges get harder. So so that wherever they enter, you know, they can have a sense of accomplishment and so on. So, uh, you know, that, you know, and you've heard of gamification, have you at all? Yeah. yeah, so that's on the reward side. That's increasing the reward, right? But a lot of it is self-reward. Anyway, so, so just think of it in terms of what really am I offering these people? Mm -hmm in the way of self-reward, and how could I improve that, right? So Lego and these companies like that are lucky because they already have a big community, and I agree with you. Now, so I know some guys who, for instance, um, oftentimes these things spring out of communities, so they, make, they do caving, underwater caving, and uh, this, they were always rigging up lights so they could see better underwater with this thing. And the guy was in, embedded in his community and he made a better light and he automatically had a community to sell to and people that could help him. So, so I found that for small companies it's hard to create a community if 
you can build on one that exists and then offer them to lower their costs and so on. That's, that's my suggestion, but you will have better ideas. And once you have them and try them out, you'll tell us. And then I'll say, yes, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> and I'll credit you. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Just one, one quick one. Yes, please. Uh, you know, uh, gentleman there asked about the user innovation from the villages in, like in India. In India, yeah. yeah. All the whole Jugad concept. You know, I'm sure. Yeah. And what is missing is how do you take it to the next level? Yeah. So you have a solution, but how do you take it to yeah. the commercialization? So yeah. Yeah. But that's, in a sense, what your entrepreneurship courses are about, right? Because, I mean, those are the tools you're offering, isn't it? They say, well, you study the market, you do this and that and the other thing, you make prototypes, blah, blah, blah. Is it, I mean, what this is is the fuzzy front end of the process you teach, I would think, isn't it? Or am I wrong? OK. Yeah, so, so what I'm trying to do is not say that this is a way to do entrepreneurship. I'm trying to say, when your people in your classes are stuck for an idea, then you say to them, look, here is, a, here is a phenomenon that you may not know about. Your own needs, and you can build on those. And then all this other stuff we show you, you know, about exploring the size of the market and all the rest of it, uh, is, is something that could follow. It's my suggestion. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>